Should you leave religion to properly understand non-duality or to properly understand spirituality? The reason why I decided to talk about this today is because very early in my journey, there was a lot of struggle with this. There was a struggle with trying to reconcile and justify belief systems, religion, ideologies, which seemed to clash a lot, which brought about a lot of conflict. And on top of that, I get so many messages, so many comments, different people talking to me about how I am managing religion with non-duality. Or in fact, people are reaching out to me to somehow find some solace. Some individuals have the idea that I am perhaps renouncing a belief system somehow leaving behind a belief system. And this is the case because I'm very happy to question these belief systems. I'm very happy to investigate and be honest and get into the root of these belief systems and religion and ideologies. And so for this reason, some of these individuals, they might find solace listening to these videos. They feel some sort of comfort as though they are not alone in this struggle. And so I thought I'd give it a few minutes to just kind of break this down and talk about this. The short answer is no. There's no need to leave religion. There's no need to leave belief systems. There's no need to believe, uh, there's no need to leave ideologies. There's no leaving. That's what true spirituality is about. It's not about leaving, it's not about escaping. Because if you are leaving something, it means that you're trying to go to a place that is better. If you're escaping something, it means there's something you're not willing to confront. And I'm using these terms, escaping might sound a bit heavy for some of you, but this is what tends to happen. It's like you are trying to run away. And so as we enter this path of spirituality and do self-inquiry and meditate and get into that flow, reading all these books and there some sort of tendency of rebelliousness might start to bubble up. And this is very natural. This is very natural because it's part of human nature to recognize that If I have found something that is better than the alternative, I may or may not decide to put the alternative or put the thing, the old thing or the old way into bad light. And I try to justify more and more why I should update, why I should go ahead for the new thing. So for an example, if you have found a better place to get water, let's just say, the river that you are getting your water from is a lot closer and a lot safer to get to. And so you make all these justifications as to why you shouldn't get it from the local well anymore. And then eventually you might come up with reasons and justifications as to why the well is actually a bad thing, even though the well has had you thriving for many, many years. And so this is just a part of human nature to bring about this sort of rebelliousness. And so in, when we reflect this onto religion or belief systems in general, as soon as some of us enter spirituality, enter this investigation, there is this uprising of rebelliousness of like, why is this the case? Why does this happen? 
Why, why should I do this because religion tells me so? Why? And all these questions arise. And there's nothing wrong with any of this at all. And I will emphasize this now. There's no right or wrong when talking about this. But we need to look at the nature of what religion is for us to understand why there is no leaving or there is no need to leave. Religion is a set of rules or laws that one believes in, that one subscribes to, that one lives by. And so the realm in which religion is retained within each other is in the realm of thought, is in the realm of memory, is in the realm of belief systems. Therefore, it's actually no different to an opinion you might have about some food. Why pizza is better than um, pasta. It's actually no different. It's just that perhaps one thought is backed up by a lot more ideas, is backed up by a lot more emotions, a lot more evidence, a lot more facts, a lot more memories, a lot more stories, a lot more people, just lots more justifications. But fundamentally, it's an idea and this idea you, you are subscribing to. So whether you are subscribed to a particular idea or not, doesn't actually have an effect on your spiritual journey. Not at all. In fact, recognizing the nature of these thoughts and ideas and belief systems that we retain is where it's really at. This is the encouragement of non-duality, so to speak, or true spiritual practice. It's the encouragement to really turn around and observe oneself, observe this, observe the place we are looking out from, to really recognize the true essence and nature of that. And so part of turning around and, and looking at this reflection is by understanding the thoughts and ideas and belief systems that stand in the way of recognizing the true essence of what is taking place. Now, the funny thing is, is that I don't know what religion you follow or may have followed or whatever your situation is, but I can assure you that that religion also has some sort of encouragement to look inwardly as well. Therefore, religion is a stepping stone, is a system to live by so that you may abide in this higher truth or this essential truth of what is happening. But this can also become extremely entangled because it comes with a lot of ideas and belief systems and and thoughts and and all of that sort of psychological baggage. And so for this reason, when I speak about non-duality, I get people messaging me and telling me, hey, like I my journey is very similar to yours and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I have left X, Y, Z, I have left this religion. If that's the conclusion you've come to, that's fine. But understand that whatever you have left, you are replacing with something else. And in that replacement, you haven't really done anything. It doesn't matter what system you are following. It doesn't matter what um, idea you have or what opinion you have. Just understand the nature of it. Understand the nature of the system. Understand the nature of the thought. The actual idea itself. 
where did this thought come from? Where did this belief come from? Where did the strength and motivation to follow this belief come from? But on the flip side, where is this rebelliousness coming from? Where is the motivation to rebel against a particular idea coming from? So these are really the questions to ask. Because once it's understood, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter what is floating through the sky. It doesn't matter what is floating through the sky of the mind. Thoughts will come and go and they'll pass by, they'll update, they'll change, regardless as to whether we actively do this or not. But actively trying to change thoughts and belief systems and fighting belief systems and ideologies keeps you in an entanglement as though it's all been about just thoughts it's always been about beliefs it's not so all it's all it really is is to just understand the nature of thoughts and I'll give you another example. My everyday profession is that I am an engineer. I work every single day as an engineer for a company. Now, the reason why I am able to be an engineer is because I went to university. I did some studying and I got a degree. Now, why this degree might be valuable to the company I'm working for is because it's proof that I have accumulated a set amount of ideas and belief systems and laws that that company needs to keep whatever they are doing going. Okay. Now, these laws and ideas are no different to religious ideas or your opinion about whether pizza or pasta is better. And this might actually offend people, but this is just sit down and observe and see this, right? You might justify it because a rule has come from a higher place, has come from a more important person, has, that's, that's fine. But also understand that that, that is a justification that this is all within the realm of the mind, the psychological movement that takes place. So conducting my daily life as an engineer, if I am now <clears throat> rebellious against all thoughts, against all belief systems, then survival is impacted. You can, you can immediately see that there's a conflict I won't be able to continue this profession. I won't be able to earn a salary to put food on the table or have a roof over my head. If you want to go back to caveman times, if I'm attacking all the beliefs and memories and ideas and I'm rebelling against them, then I won't be able to understand where I need to go again to find the fruits or to find the food or the water. Therefore, it's not about trying to attack or rebel against what you believe in or what is believed in, but simply understand that there is something that there is a belief of. There's an idea. This particular perspective has a high level of inclination towards Islam Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever the case, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> but understand that this inclination now has an Im influence on your perspective, has some sort of warp on your perspective. See, see how this takes place. Really observe this and, and question yourself. And once again, <clears throat> I can bet you that whatever it is that you believe in, whatever religion it is, it's actually telling you to transcend the thoughts alone. It's telling you to go beyond just the psychological part of the religion itself. Many religions have different tiers, 
different levels of understandings, different hierarchies of how strong of a believer you are, all these different religions, <clears throat> they'll have this. And then they'll have this peak goal. This peak everlasting goal. <clears throat> and that peak everlasting goal, which is everything you've ever wanted, is free from thoughts and ideas anyway. Because the birth of all suffering is ideas and thoughts and opinions. So I really hope that this clears things up. Okay? It doesn't have to make sense. But being rebellious doesn't necessarily mean you are <clears throat> going towards the truth. You're not going anywhere. There is no going anywhere. There's a quote where, I can't remember where I read this. I think somewhere on Instagram I read this. Um, that <clears throat> it's not... Enlightenment isn't a path that you go towards. It's simply what, what you live from. Or act from. So, it's all okay in the end. It goes back, if you've seen my previous video, it goes back to all the previous conversations and talks on how there's this underlying sense of okayness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter and it's all okay. No agreement, no disagreement, no rebelliousness, no advancements, no fighting, no attachments. It's just all okay. And rest in that okayness. And then ask yourself, is there something I'm not okay with? What is it? Okay, then let's observe that. Let's have a look at it. And recognize that actually, it's uh, there's no reason to not be okay with it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this, this somehow hits home and helps you reconcile your, <clears throat> your conflicts, if you have any. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. This is Hassan from The Spiritual Walks and we are all on a journey towards the truth.